Three, two, one. Um, good evening. This is a meeting of the Parks and Recreation Committee. Uh, it's Monday, March 9th, and it is uh, 7.58 p.m. Uh, on my left is Mr. Bobby Phillips. My, this is Jeff Schilling speaking as chairman. Uh, Mr. Twilliger is off tonight and will not be attending. Um, we are here to discuss the uh, ordinance uh, 013-2020, uh, considering the uh, recommendation of the Parks Committee to sell some surplus property at the rear of 636 Shaftesbury Road. Um, and so we had some questions come up. This is a second go around on this, and uh, we'll be discussing some questions tonight. And I think we could probably start with Mr. Kitterington. Do you have any questions? No, I think you had uh, received questions okay. from uh, okay. the mayor. Um, is the, somebody from the Park and Recreation Committee here, here tonight, here at the Park Board? Okay. Jeremy Drake, Park Superintendent. Okay. Um, any comments or before we uh, start? Yeah, just a couple of things. I think, first of all, um, this has brought up kind of a, a concern that we need to look at our, our system at, as a large, on a larger scale. Um, it's apparent we have some encroachment issues system-wide, right? This isn't just an isolated incident. And up until now, I don't want to speak too much for our park board, but up until now, we've handled this very much on a case-by-case -case basis. So. Uh, in the instance of uh, uh, Mr. Carnum, I believe in 2018, approached the city wanting to uh, purchase land, and we offered that as surplus. Um, when we went out there to review that, I took the board out, we toured that property and realized we did have encroachment issues there, much like we have with the, with the ordinance that's before us tonight. Um, I could show you some other places in Edgewater Park. I know we've got sheds and fences and things that are uh, encroaching upon us, and I'm in no way um, uh, uh, encouraging that or um, you know, saying that, that we want this. We absolutely don't, but we need to, to really take a look at this. And up until now, we've, we've handled it very much uh, case by case, and I've had a lot of leniency to be able to work with our budding homeowners. Some want us to say, stay five feet or more off of their property line, or what we assume is the property line, right? So there's very much a gray area on some of our properties. Um, if they, we've got a, a homeowner in Carriage Crossing, for example, that built a new fence, and right away I got a call that they didn't want our mowers running up against that fence, and they would come outside of the fence into park property and mow, or what I assume is park property. Uh, we've got other places that homeowners want us to move right up to what we assume is the line and maybe even just a little bit in because they don't they might mow it with a walk behind mower or whatever that they, they mow it with and don't want the extra work so there's been a lot of gray area a lot of leniency back and forth is is what i what i want to say first um this case be it that it is a basketball court and a little different than a shed and, and so forth um it's still encroachment just like a shed or any of these other issues that I've just told you. So I just say that, that I say all that to say we need to really look at our properties as a whole, as a city, as a system, and and look into this a little closer if um, this has brought you know kind of brought that to light. So um, I think that's the first thing. Uh, the other thing is last week in council was mentioned that a park superintendent had given permission for this court to go in i want to be very clear that i do not have authority to offer permission for such a thing that would have to go before the board so i'm not sure what superintendent gave permission i can say it wasn't for me i don't have authority to do that and know that um, so i guess those are the main things to start and if there are any other questions i can answer i'd be happy to do that uh, again i don't think we don't have a park board, uh, any park board uh, representatives here, so I don't want to speak for them, but um, hopefully could help answer maybe some of, uh, of your other questions you may have. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Right. Um, why don't you stay there, because I think we're going to ask questions. Okay. Um, and if you can't answer them, just say so. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But if we can get some of these done tonight, um, that would be advantageous for everybody. Sure. Okay. Do you want, uh, well, let me, let me start. Um, the uh, um, 
Mayor Robin Oda had sent me a list of questions, and I'm going to take some time and read those. And then, again, if you can answer them, that's fine. And if Absolutely. not, we will uh, f uh, forward them on to the uh, commissioners sure. on that. Um, so she said, uh, first question, I think that she's already addressed here, but the verbal permission, who gave verbal permission and when? And again, we're probably talking about this um, cement pad basketball court. Um, so do you have any idea? Uh, you said you did not. It did, I did not, absolutely not. And I did not ever see it come before our park board for okay. approval. Um, do you have any idea when this park board was put in, or the, not the park, <laughs> the basketball court was put in? I don't. Um, I'd say it's, I, I actually did notice that along with a lot of the other encroachments when we were out looking at the Carnum property and so forth. Uh, that was in 2018, so sometime before that. I'm not sure when. Okay. Okay. Um, I then. Uh, obviously, you don't know who poured the cement or any who constructed the the court or anything of that sort. I do not. You don't have any idea on that, okay? Um, and then again, her next question was, "How was the space accessed in order to pour that much concrete?" You don't have any Couldn't idea say. on that one either. Um, uh, the homeowner had stated, or the uh, property owner had stated in council meeting that they were allowed to mow, maintain uh, the space because it wasn't reachable. By city staff to mow and your observation was that a correct statement uh, again that goes kind of back to what I said in the very beginning we give up until now I've given a lot of leniency back and forth between if a homeowner or budding homeowner wants to come out and mow further into the park so I think that was one of those situations we mow that piece with a, a large tractor and a 16 foot pull behind mower so we could have mowed that but as homeowners want to come out and mow a little further on to what we assume is our side we've allowed that so okay. I think that was the case here that it was just a large piece of equipment they were more than willing to mow a little further out and that that's why how that progressed or why that happened over time so you don't have like a trailing trim mower that goes you do that too as well we sure do yes absolutely and and um, on those bigger parcels like that uh, they get mowed with the, the large tractor and then a small uh, 60 inch zero turn commercial mower comes in behind and and when mow uh, you know trim mow and so forth um, you know in this case they just had mowed the homeowner mowed further out and like I said up until now that's been kind of just a common practice back and forth okay okay um, was this was this um well, okay, again, you may not be able to answer them, but the, the question was, when did this come before the park board? In other words, that this basketball cement pad, did it come, it never came to you from what you said, right? Right. No, I did have a, a conversation with Charlie Brown, who works for our park department. That's the father of, of the homeowner. Um, was asking about that, and at that time he was told that would need to go before the board. I never saw it come before the board, to my knowledge. And so it was never discussed any further. Okay, thank you. Um, and so, evidently, the, the homeowner or the property owner decided where this cement pad was going to go. There was no discussion with the park board. Correct. To my knowledge, no no discussion with the board whatsoever. Okay. Um, At least in a board meeting. Okay, that's great, um, Mr. Phillips. Well, getting back to uh, the July 10, 2019 uh, Board of Park Commissioners meeting, uh, it, there's a request from Ms. Christina Schaefer uh, to be able to purchase a small parcel in Archer Park, and Mr. Capper's request this be tabled, and that there was a review or, of this request at the August meeting. After that July meeting, did, was there any inventory then or scouting of the site or interview or inter investigation done? We toured during, we, I toured with our board once a year through our entire park system and we did tour that location. I uh, believe we did that in August, August or beginning of September and I, we could find out for sure. But when we toured with the board, they did see Close the enough. site. Yes. So what was the result of that? Uh, they looked at it and they determined that we could issue that as surplus upon seeing it. Did you find any other encroachments in that area? Uh, well, there are other encroachments, yes. Other abutting, other abutting neighborhood, neighbors uh, 
in the same area are encroaching. We've got a garden and uh, I think a shed and, and some other things. And like I said, this is not something we encourage, but it, it does happen from time to time. And we don't know honestly exactly where those property lines are. My guys kind of, our, our mowing starts and stops. Um, and that's kind of what we look at as the property line loosely. Um, and that's why I say we need to really look at this as a system to, to if we're going to draw those lines and, and mark these property boundaries so we know better where those are. So, but would, do we have any idea how long these items uh, on, on these encroachments at Archer Park, how long they've been there? I the, don't know. Years? I, do I would assume, but I, I really don't know for sure. Um, was there any conversation with any of the property owners there at that time? Not to my knowledge. I know I did, I did not have any uh, conversation with them. And just so you know, too, some of these areas I don't get into on a regular basis. I mean, I've got guys there that mow through the mowing season once a week, but even I don't know that they even know necessarily exactly where these property lines are. So is it some of this handled by our temp staff? Some mowing. of the mowing, yes. Yeah, some of the mowing is, yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, so, okay, so you, you indicated that we don't know who gave permission to do what, when. Correct. Um, I appreciate the uh, the flexibility of, of neighbors helping neighbors, so to speak, in the mowing process and that sort of thing. And that does require some flexibility. But standardized property lines, especially when developments are, are done, are usually in a straight line basis. So I, I would assume that the folks going out there would be able to see those property lines and mow a straight line down the back of the trees or something like that to get as close as possible. Um, the other question I had there. So nobody within the city attorney's office was contacted or asked any questions about what could be done about encroachments or anything like that? No, sir. I, your, at least I, I did not. Okay. No. All right. Um, I think that's all I have um, uh, along this line of stuff. Okay. Um, so let's go back to the beginning here, and um, it, it, concerning Archer Park, do you, you know how Archer Park was ceded to the city, the properties Archer the Park? Very how, how did the city get control of the, the lots in Archer Park? Um, I assume Mrs. Knight might be able to enlighten us on that. I'm not or Mr. exactly sure. Or Mr. Titterington. Well, I assume part of the, yeah. the development. Okay. Um, over, I can't go back to how far back, but uh, Mr. Forrest Archer would routinely deed about an acre a year at the end of a year for, for many years. And that became Archer, Archer Park, Park. Um, plus whatever land might have already been dedicated. And then there was additional land when Nottingham became a development. Okay. But it was going back a good several, a few decades it started. Um, and then Archer Park property is actually titled to the city. Okay, that's a yes. All right. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> um, and then, um, what is it? Are you from? What is the um, the general procedure for disposition of city-owned property? In other words, if you have something that you in the parks department you declare as you, you feel that you're no longer going to use and has some value and um, you want to dispose of it, what, what normal procedure do we take on that? Uh, exactly what we've done in the past here, the last couple of years, we had a, a parcel out at Stonebridge Park that we are, yeah, Stonebridge that we did uh, offer surplus. Um, we had the land uh, in Archer Park behind Mr. Carnum. We offered a surplus. So usually we'll get a letter, either I receive it or sometimes it'll go straight to the park board. Uh, the board will want to tour that land. We look at it. We discuss what the current uses are, if we have any future development, and how that land might be used. And if it's determined that we do not have a future, current or future use for it, uh, the board will recommend to council to offer that as surplus land. So that's typically been the procedure that, that we go through, the process we go through okay. uh, on park land. Okay. Um, so we have, actually we're dealing with two things here. We have an outbuilding 
um, or shed that's on uh, City of Troy Park property behind 636 Shaftesbury Road. Um, and this, I believe, has an interesting story as well. Um, so are you familiar with that shed at all? No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, so we'll, we'll pass those questions on to the um, um, park board then. You don't, you don't have any idea how that shed got to where it was? No, where sir. It is? No, sir. Okay. 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 Um, are, are you, and this is my, I see uh, Mr. Kerber in the audience. Can, are you available to answer a question for me? Thank you. I appreciate that. And we'll get back to Jeremy on that. So. Okay. Um, when a uh, like an outbuilding, or in this case, this cement pad, when it appears on city property, uh, is placed on city property. What happens to the ownership of that building or cement pad? Does it transfer automatically to the city, or how does that? I mean, if there's no, yeah, I know, like as an example, we just got um, um, you know some money for some trees from the Duke, and you know that's so that you know the trees are bought and they're given to the city of Troy and. And you know, I assume that becomes Troy property. So in, in this case, if, if the shed, um, my understanding was originally um, placed on city property to be used uh, for a uh, storage facility for one of the, the, the soccer leagues or something. And at that point, did that shed become city property? Well, there's a distinction between uh, additions to uh, real estate versus you know oftentimes like a shed is is highly uh, mobile where they can be transferred and they're not embedded on the property so I and without knowing um, what how the shed is uh, if it's affixed to the property or not uh, and then you also have to look into the context of uh, you're like, does it automatically become the property of the city? Or I mean, it, it depends on, is that in reference to, um, you know, if the city declared it surplus and offered it for sale, would that would that go along as part of the, the bid that there? Um, that, uh, and then whether or not the shed, the shed probably would not, if, it, if it's a typical shed, only because that is not affixed to the real estate. Um, I'm, I'm, there are certainly sheds that are affixed to, to right, right. Um, but just my knowledge of sheds, most of them are okay. something that can be hauled away. Okay, so in the, in the case of the cement pad, it's obviously embedded in the ground. And so the, the question is, who owns it? <laughs> well, it's on the city property, and uh, you, know, the, you would have to think, uh, assuming that all the facts that have been presented are correct, that if there was property, you know, uh, an improvement made to the property that uh, um, it, I would say typically that the uh, and I haven't had an opportunity to research that. I understand. That I, just, I, I just called and you. Know, and I know we didn't discuss it, this beforehand. And, and there can be a number of factors that play into it. So I'm going to put that there. But uh, um, you know, typically speaking, if somebody trespasses and erects something uh, on uh, someone else's property, that would be. Uh, the, the property owner would have a choice. I mean, there's a number of options available that, you know, the, uh, there could be a cost associated with the removal of it and whether or not there would be some, any sort of court action uh, 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 dealing with that. So uh, I, I hesitate to give you a hard and fast, uh, it, it definitely uh, belongs to the city. I, I think the city has a lot of options on how it wishes to proceed with this matter. Can you give me some idea on how to, I mean, you know, obviously we could say we're going to just leave everything alone. We can say we're going to sell it back to the, whoever wants to buy it, or we can tear it up and 
plant grass seed, right? I mean, well, we could ask the you could ask the property owner to uh, remediate the situation uh, with the removal. Um, you know, and I, I um, you know, uh, what I would ask is before the, there was any uh, discussions on the options, I'd like to have an opportunity to sit down and maybe spell those things out because. The first thing we need to do is establish the facts of the situation because those could influence the available options. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, okay. Um, okay. We'll go back to the. Um, so, you've already mentioned that we've had some problems with encroachment. Right. And our, I guess the, the in my own estimation, the front line. On, on identifying encroachment would be the, the people that mow the parks. And so is there, are there any written procedures that, that say, hey, you know, if you come up across something that looks like encroachment, tell somebody? Uh, no, sir. A uh, couple things there. One, we use um, seasonal employees hired through staff mark to do that trim mowing against the property lines. So these aren't full-time Park Department employees doing that mowing. Okay. The second piece I want to point out is we've been very lenient back and forth, like I said, um, working with our abutting homeowners to maintain very cordial relationships. And it's up until now worked very well. We've had very few complaints from week to week. I've got guys in those parks mowing right up against private property every week. And I very rarely we'll get a call all season long for six or seven months of the growing season with the with a complaint or an issue whether we're mowing one side or the other a little too far in or they're coming a little too far out so i just want to be very clear on that that, that we've had a lot of leniency back and forth so it seems like you know, mr phillips pointed out it seems like there would be a straight line there not always in you know in, in application does it always work that way and I'm not saying that moving forward we can't set that as the precedent and that these are the hard lines and that I could train our seasonal employees. They could absolutely be uh, versed on that and we could, we could set that as a policy moving forward. Uh, totally open to that if that's the direction we want to go. Just up until now we've not had that. Okay. I do, if I could, ask, um, because we've handled this so case by case up until now, um, and I know you were on council when we offered the um, previous parcel up to Mr. Carnum. We had very deliberate encroachment on that parcel. So much so when we pulled up and the park board got out, there was a kind of a joke made of, geez, thanks for mowing our, our lawn and even having it treated for us, right? So, and again, I'm, I'm not taking this lightly and I, and I know it's a serious situation. I'm not condoning it. I'm not encouraging it. I'm just saying, we've kind of this has been happening so much over such a long period of time to where when we had that blatant encroachment then it was just looked at pretty lightly even by our board and i don't want to speak i'm not speaking too much for our board here but i'm just saying that's kind of been the feeling up until now uh, there was a fire pit there were trees planted the grass the turf was being treated by a lawn care company it was being mowed by the homeowner the board looks at it we offered it for surplus Council approves it, we sell it. This case, it comes up, board looks at it, we offer it for surplus, and we're, we're, we're here tonight talking about it. So mm -hmm. I just want to point that out, that you know, there are all these questions going back and forth about who knew what and, and, and what lines. This has kind of been the ongoing thing for years. And again, it's, we've had very cordial relationships with the homeowners back and forth because we've had that leniency in kind of a gray area, so to speak. And I know that's not always a good thing, but that's just what has got us to where we are right now, Okay, if that helps. If I may interject Go ahead. off of that comment. I appreciate that. And like I stated earlier, it's a nice uh, working relationship when there is give and take. I got that. Sure. However, coming from um, my seat up mm -hmm. here and the first that I've known that any encroachments had occurred. I don't want anybody encroaching on my property and I would never consider encroaching on somebody else's property. And I don't want anybody else encroaching on the city property because we're not going to encroach upon their property. We bend over backwards with our right-of-ways. And for this to occur is just unacceptable in my opinion. 
Sure. So uh, some oversight is sorely needed uh, and question asking on this. And equitability, in my mind, is what is, is, is occurring here. Sure. So uh, at least that's where I'm coming from with it. Absolutely. Okay? And again, the first that I've heard of, of any of these types of situations. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's where I'm coming from. So essentially, the note, we really haven't been tracking, not we, the, the Board of Park Commissioners really hasn't been tracking these encroachments, they don't have a list of where all these things are. They have in really, I mean, I know you said you survey once a year. Um, at that time, do you record the encroachments that you think are happening or? We have not, no. Okay. I have not, and I assume our, the board has not, again, I don't want to speak for them, but um, to my knowledge, they've not been keeping okay. record so, either. So really, we don't have, have a handle on this thing as far as what's happening or what's not. And that's to my point early in the, in, when I got up here, we really need to look at this as a system-wide okay. issue. So, so Mr. Chair, yes. you and I have talked about uh, maybe having this being done as an intern project. Yes. Uh, uh, working with your staff, with you and your, and your staff, uh, and then just determining where there are uh, structural uh, encroachments and where there are gardens or lawn that they're taking care of because I see those as two different things um, you know in Mr. Carnum's case he was just taking care of green space primarily for us um, in this case we have a permanent structure that that brand's going to have to research all the, all the different options one of which would be to, to put it out for, for bid um, so I see there's a, a distinction there, and the reason I say that and in talking to uh, uh, Mr. Kerber is when we come up or, or when we survey all the parks and we determine uh, that there are encroachments, then we have to identify what type of encroachment it is because if it's a structural encroachment, then we really have to put people on notice to get those encroachments off uh, or or have the park board entertain declaring it surplus. And in the other case, if it's just use of the property, it's, it's helping us out or it's a garden and there's really no, no worries, if you will, because it's easy to restore it if we need to, then there probably have to be a different type of letter saying, hey, we know this is going on, just be, just be aware it's our property and at some point we may need to use it for a different purpose and if we do use it for a different purpose we're not going to be reimbursing you for the lost use of that property so there are two different types of encroachment mm -hmm. and uh, the first step I think we, we could have an intern this summer uh, just survey all of the 26 parks uh, and and see where the encroachments might might lie yeah I, I think that's one of the steps we have to take here on this um, And you said, actually, said that we have problems all throughout our park system, not just at Archer. So I suspect that from just yeah. from what we see. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned that you know some of the um, property owners, at their own behest, mow parts of the park, and every once in a while, our mowers slide over and mow some private property. To a degree, again, to a degree. I, mean, very, I, I mean, I'm talking half of a mower yeah. width or... Right, right. So yeah. but we're not, we don't have anybody... I don't want anybody to think we're going clear in on private property and mowing their backyard or right, right, something right. like that. Um, but my concern would be, you know, a, a private system, you know, mowing park property and then incurring an injury and the question then, are we liable for that? You know, knowing that, you know, we had... Sure. You know, somehow given them it, it not permission, but we'd acquiesce to their mowing of yeah. our park property. And I can speak to that. So so what I meant by that, like Curious Crossing is a perfect example. We've got and I don't know the exact address, it's the second house in on the on the very next street there, Park Drive, I believe it is. Um, anyway, there was a fence, a wood fence that was that was um, built 
several years ago. So they have to stay in so many feet, I don't know exactly how far off of the property line. Rather than some, like Westbrook, for example, we mow right along most of those fences. Whether that's the property line exactly or not, I don't know. I assume those fences are probably bumped in a few feet off the property line. Courage Crossing was one, the homeowner came to, called right away, I don't want your mowers up against my fence. I will come outside the fence and mow along my fence. So when I say that, they're not mowing clear out into our park. Where that property line is exactly, <coughs> I'm not sure. I assume the fence is set in. There's a set back there off of the property line. They're coming outside of that fence and mowing on the park side of the fence. Where that, again, where that property line is exactly, I'm not exactly sure. But, uh, you know, I, I just want to be clear that I'm not saying we go clear in on private property and I'm not saying that homeowners come clear in on, blatantly in on public park property and mowing. I'm just saying we've had that little bit of a gray piece back and forth where we've had that buffer and, you know, work, the, work those details out with the individual homeowners up until now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Are the, are, are the, and again, I'm going to ask you in relationship to the board, but are the Board of Park Commissioners responsible for administrating educational instruction on ethics as related to property owned by the City of Troy or the Board of Park Commissioners for Park Board supervisors like yourself, staff, and city employees working under the supervision of the Board of Park Commissioners? In other words, has, do we have a... Are, you know, have you been given ethics training by the city of Troy yourself? Uh, to a degree, yeah. I don't know exactly what you're referring to necessarily. It's if it's any type of training is not through the park board. It's typically through the city, um, depending on what it is, city hall or whatnot. Right. But then does, does the and I'm assuming this goes through the human resources department. So does human resources say we need to? This is our time to do review ethics training and they give you that would be through the city yes not necessarily they, they, the do they give that to you or do they do that themselves the park board would not the park board does not have anything to do with ethics training at all no correct however the, the park board staff is included in all training and, <coughs> and periodically we will do uh, ethics training uh, in addition uh, as part of acknowledgement, all uh, employees, uh, when they acknowledge their annual performance uh, evaluation, uh, sign an acknowledgement that they have read, understand, uh, and will comply with uh, all rules, regulations, state law, local laws, etc. Okay, but not necessarily, I mean, that's, ethics is covered in that, but it's not. But we, again... We have had uh, ethics training. Uh, is, it, is it done in once a year or? Not, it's less frequently than that. Okay. Um, when in, somebody comes on to the, to the staff, when we hire somebody, whether it's the part time people that mow or a new hire within the city, um, do they go through ethics training at that particular point in time? They go through that as a, uh, a general review of all of the uh, various rules and regulations. So they don't do a separate two to four hour ethics training when okay. they first okay. come on board. And so then we have, for the employees that work with the city of Troy and the parks department, we have a sign saying that they have received this type of training Yes, we okay. sign off on that. Thank you, Mr. Titterington. I wasn't quite understanding the question, what you're okay. getting at there. Okay. But that, that comes through human resources. That's not the parks bailiwick on that. Correct. Okay. Um, you have any other questions? No. I, no, I, I think I need, know where I'd like to go with this. Okay. Um, you like a suggestion? I, should listen to the I think we can open this up to the uh, any audience participation at this time if they'd like any comments. Thank you. I appreciate all your help on that.
Hi. Good afternoon. I'm Christina Schaefer, 636 Shaftesbury. What questions would you like for me? I'm not here to get anybody in trouble. I am not saying what we did was right. I did ask, and I did do that with putting the basketball court on there, and it's been there for four years. Okay. So the I don't know that it's not there, I didn't see it, has been there for four years. Um, the shed you're talking about, um, there was a gentleman who was no longer alive um, who worked for the Strawberry Soccer Committee who no longer needed the shed because it was falling apart. The shed has been there for 15 years. I have a picture of it on my property when my house was being constructed. Okay. Um, Jeremy, no offense, but when the next door neighbor to my right and the next door neighbor to my left before there was a fence in my backyard, um, no mower came back there and mowed at this crooked angle, whichever way. Yes, Jeremy's team always comes out with a very large mower. I did take it upon myself to mow all the way out there so they didn't have to bring a second mower in. Did I call them and ask them to do that? No. Did I ask them to bring a mower in? It was for me to help them out, to kind of keep them out there. They were doing it all the way around the rest of the neighborhood, which is why six neighbors all the way around mowed out to make their life a little bit easier and not having to drag out extra material. Okay. We um, appreciate that. So. Again. I know Mr. Carnum did the same thing. He asked for the, you know, am I being treated differently because I'm a woman and that I have petitioned right after all this? I feel like I'm getting so much pushback and I'm just trying to make everything right to help out the city and to do what's the right thing with everybody right now. Okay. And we appreciate that. And again, um, I think it's the second time we've talked. So it's, yes. it's uh, uh, we're just trying to get to, uh, I said there's, unfortunately or fortunately, there's been a lot of questions concerning this particular piece of property. I understand. And so before we can proceed, um, we have to get some of these questions answered. And I'm not sure how long that's going to take, um, to be quite honest with you, on this thing. So it's, it's um, um, as Mr. Kerber stated, um, you know, one of the options is to sell this property. Um, uh, but before we uh, proceed, you know, to the question of what do we do going forward, we have to get all these questions answered. So that's where we are right now. And um, I don't want you to take any offense on that. And it's not that um, I don't think we would, uh, I think we would treat any property owner in this particular situation the same way. At least I think I would, right. um, you know, from that standpoint. Um, so. But that's where we are right now, and so it, it's a matter of we got to get through some other things first, and then we will um, reconsider what we're going to do with this piece of property or the, what we're going to do with the, the city-owned park property that's under discussion right now. Okay. So just be patient with us if you can. It's it's been four years, and it you know it may be a little while longer before we decide what to do. It's been longer. I mean, I can say just literally lived in this house for 15 years and maintained that land for 15 years and keeping it nice and upkeep and everything else going along with it. And again, we, we appreciate that. And uh, I know anything to make our parks department staff job easier is always welcomed. And, uh, but again, we just, we just have to work through this thing right now. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Ann McDonough. I live at 700 Governor's Road. I am just about five houses down from Chrissy. I had just put in an application to buy property behind mine of this surplus property that belongs to this uh, park board. In my opinion, um, we are looking to buy the property, whether it was kept up or not or whatever, just looking to buy what is considered surplus property. I feel that all this other stuff that we are addressing today is not necessarily to do with buying property. Chrissy has her stuff there. Is there any reason why, since she wants to buy that property, whatever is on it, uh, uh, since considered or committed five years ago, four years ago, yesterday, they should not be part of this 
argument or whatever you might want to call it. All I want to do is buy a piece of property. That's all she wants to do is buy a piece of property. It's surplus. It has been given to Mr. Carnum, which I'm glad it has, but why would it not be the same way for the rest of us? Without question, without bringing up things that, you know, like the park board. How in the world, I mean the people mowing, how in the world would they know where the exact property line is unless there is a fence or something? Um, to say that, well, have they encroached? Has someone else encroached as far as taking care of it? I just feel that this board has, with all due respect, has gone overboard in addressing the situation. I, I really feel that we have gone almost like into a big ball. We start with a little ball and now it's a big ball that doesn't really, doesn't really apply to what we really want to do. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Chuck Carter, 710 Governors Road, um, since my name has been mentioned a couple he times. He started all this stuff, right? I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we lived out there for about 18 years, and um, uh, one of the first houses out there. Um, before um, all this, when we, when we built out there, the, the park department, uh, it was just vacant land. Consequently, it was a lot of weeds and stuff like that before they started mowing it, and now they mow it quite often, and it's very nice when they mow it. Anyway, so when I got there, uh, I didn't like the looks of it, so I started fertilizing, seeding, uh, the whole thing. Uh, then I went out farther than my property line just to keep the, the weeds and the, and the, and the uh, debris from blowing into my yard. Um, that kind of took off and I expanded that to the park access which uh, is on uh, on my side and then I expanded it down towards the uh, the ball field only because I want a nice place for people to walk uh, if I didn't it would look like it does uh, in where the where the park is back there so it's very nice it's manicured it's uh, fertilized it's mowed and then I added uh, a place right behind my house so the grandkids can walk down to the park, uh, the playground. So, uh, you know, I, I don't want any thanks. I don't want any money for it. I'm just doing it just to make it look nice. Uh, I planted trees back there. And then I thought, hmm, I better see if I can buy some of this property just to kind of protect my trees and statues and stuff. So that's what I did. I went through the process. And the... Um, uh, Jeremy was very good. The park uh, board was very good. Uh, it was kind of a, a, a smooth situation. Uh, and, yeah, I'm not real sure why it can't be that way. As far as the basketball court, uh, it's known in the neighborhood that anybody can play on it. My grandkids go over and play on it. I know the neighbors go over and play on it. Uh, I told uh, grandkids one time, go down to the, uh, to the Archer Park playground. Well, their basketball courts are, are crappy. So this is a very nice basketball court. Um, don't know how much he paid for it, but he put some money into the backboard, the cement work, and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I understand the situation, uh, but it just seems like it's harder than it should be. That's all. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. I, I, just a comment back to, to Ms. Schaefer and Mr. Karma, and I'm sorry, Ms. McDonough. McDonough. Uh, I, we do appreciate, and I will speak for us here, we do appreciate the issue. As I stated earlier, this is the first time that these encroachment issues have cropped up that have really stood out to me uh, with this. And as a property owner, I know where my four corners are. So. We get, on council, we get accused all the time of various and sundry things and not abiding by the rules. And by golly, if I violated the rules, we probably, I would be one of the first ones tarred and feathered. So we expect the same reciprocity, if you will. So it's just a matter of doing this correctly. I think 
and I'm going to speak for myself here, that in the long run this will work out. However, I hope that we can get the process, process and procedure done so we don't have to be here again. So just as uh, the chair said, uh, please just give us some time here. We'll, we'll get through it. Okay. How would you like to proceed? I think that this needs to go back to the park board. They need to uh, ask a lot of hard questions of themselves and, uh, and the employees and develop a procedure and process to inventory and document and uh, see what, what we can do on a citywide basis to rectify all of these issues. Okay. So we can move this to a second reading. And then I'd like to refer this back to committee. Um, for further study and wait until we hear, hear from the park board on that, on what they want to do. What so, actually we need so to table that? So you want to that? return? No. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think so. So you want to return it to the park board with a list of questions. Right. Then once those questions are answered, uh, at that point we will schedule another Parks and Recreation Committee meeting. In the meantime, if there are additional readings, we will continue to uh, go to the next reading right for as long as we need to maybe as short as one yes okay all right we have one more question here yes okay so can I just ask if park board already approved this for my piece and you're asking to go back to the park board with further questions based on what questions are you wanting to ask because what would be the difference of making his the park department more educated to make sure the encroachments are all issued in, in talking to so how come this ordinance which is just this piece could not move forward to the second reading at council next week and then the list of questions go back to mr cappers and the park board to do what we're going to do for going forward it's, it's going to go to a second reading next week okay it's not going to be tabled it would just, it'll continue to be on the council agenda. It just wouldn't be acted on until the park board uh, answers and then the uh, committee makes a formal recommendation to the full council. But from the last meeting, two of the three members of your committee approved it to go forward and only one person put the minority in to, to move it back to park. That's correct. So why, why, now does it have to then go back for this particular it's almost like we're talking about two different things okay and, and i understand that question and I'll, I'll, let's see if i can answer it I've, and uh mr Chairman, you may want to try to correct me if i'm wrong but essentially what happened between the time that the, the committee approved it and we got to city council the week there was a lot of questions that came up um, concerning the park board procedures and, and again this encroachment issue mm -hmm. uh, there were several questions including what the, you know the mayor had and this type of thing and so uh, we felt it was prudent at that particular point in time to bring it back to committee so that we can take another look at this um, uh, just to make sure we got all of our ducks in order and um, you know, so I mean, that's that's where we are. It is, and it's, it's not it's not a it's not a reflection on this. Well, I can't say that, but it's it's. Uh, we have done this before on other items, mm -hmm. when, the, when a committee either has a split decision or even on a complete decision, yay or nay, <clears throat> that we have held it over to another reading and brought it back to committee to reconsider additional facts that have come to light after the fact. So this is not a, an abnormal situation. So if it goes, it'll go to council on Monday with the recommendation then to go back to the park board or will it be voted on at council? Uh, no, it'll be, uh, there'll be a, a reading of the report mm -hmm. from the committee. Uh, that part of that reading will be that it's going back to the park board. It will not be voted on unless a council member makes a motion and has, has enough support. Uh, instead, it'll just carry on the agenda to another reading. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so if it makes a motion on Monday to 
pass it and move on, it wouldn't have to go back to the park board? Yeah, they got to suspend the rules, uh, which, may, which would require seven out of nine council members, and then there would have to be a motion to pass. Okay. Yeah, typically the legislation takes three readings. Um, when there's a, um, when there's no dissenting opinions, then we typically suspend the rules, uh, the three reading rule, and then pass it. You know, we read it once and then pass the the, le the ordinance mm -hmm. or the resolution. Um, so, uh, in order for if if uh, somebody on council wanted to press this forward, you know, then they they would and they wanted to do it on Monday night, you know, then they would first ask for a suspension of the rules. As Mr. Kittering said, it takes seven votes mm -hmm. out of nine to suspend the rules. And then the council, if the rules were suspended, then council would vote on that. And again, a, a majority would, would rule, except for the mayor has the right to veto. And then that, I don't know how many votes it takes over right okay. to veto, but. So then if for some reason, of course, that didn't happen, it goes back to, park board, then the park board doesn't meet again until the next month or the prior month. Then it comes back as a new ordinance and it starts on all over as one, it starts as two. How does that then work? No, it would, it's the same ordinance. Okay. It's just sitting on the, uh, on the agenda. Okay. Moving to the third reading. Readings. Okay. That's, that's how we do it so that we don't have to start over. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate your questions. Thank you. Is there anything else before the committee tonight? Yes. Yes, there you is. We have another one. item. Well, then we got to take a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the real tough one. Okay. Here. Go about. Okay. Uh, we have a recommendation before uh, this committee that the City Council authorize the Board of Park Commissioners to enter into a letter of agreement with the Great Ohio Bicycle Adventure GOBA regarding the visit to Troy by GOVA participants June 24th through 27th. Um, staff report. Do we have a, re a report on that or any? Nothing really in addition. This is uh, the fourth time that uh, GOVA will be coming. Right. Uh, three times before, uh, council has authorized the park board to uh, sign an agreement. Uh, enter into a letter of agreement, uh, just laying out uh, what GOBA can do, the time frames, and uh, uh, what their uh, requirements are as part of coming into town. Okay. Very routine. I don't have any questions. That's, it's a great event. Um, I know my brother has ridden in GOBA three of the four times that they've, the last three times they've been in Troy. And they usually bring in a couple thousand bicycle riders, so it's, it's, a, it's a great event. Um, so we, I don't think we have any problem with that. I'll, we'll go ahead and pass that. Right. Are we done? Yes. Okay. I think so. 